is Microsoft's biggest competitor, the pen and paper. This is transformative. Hello, and welcome to Transformative, a coffee break podcast about transforming the workplace and making your technology feel a little bit more human. I'm Sam Glover, and with me as always interviewing is Kai O'Main. In this series, we're talking about the productivity revolution, breaking down what is required to build a physical and digital workspace for a modern workforce. In today's episode, we are talking more about the analog versus digital ways of being productive. Are digital tools really more productive than the old school methods? We'll find out. Joining us around the table for this conversation is Scott Riley, the founder and consultant at Cloud Nexus, and Matt Fuchs, our workplace solutions architect here at Boxy. And also, don't forget you. The conversation is going to continue on LinkedIn, so don't forget to join the discussion on Transformative's showcase page, as well as on Boxy's LinkedIn profile. So let's get to it and join our conversation with Scott and Matt. Let's go. So today's topic, we're going to talk about like the catalyst of product, the productivity revolution, which with me and Kai, we, this is what sparked the whole debate and the want to have to start this podcast is this analog versus digital productivity war. Right? We, like COVID has changed everything. Like COVID has changed everything and made, let people discover new methods of working. But are those new methods actually more productive than the, the analog pen and paper routes? So just kick off this conversation are digital productivity tools really more useful and make us more productive than just the alternative methods of pen and paper yes yes absolutely but i think the challenge that has to come alongside that is that people need to know how to use those tools effectively and i think that's where we can see a bit of a big gap and you know we 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 work with businesses all the time and we're putting in great solutions you know inside the microsoft office suite as as a simple example Um, and you'll still find some people just sort of jotting notes on pen and paper because it's faster or because it's easier and because it's quicker for them to just pick up the pen and start scribbling down notes. And in, and in my mind, as you know, as, as someone who's a you know, big advocate for these technologies, I'm screaming inside my brain, use OneNote. <laughs> if you use OneNote, you can type all those things in and it's searchable. Or yeah. if you've got a pen device, you can actually write those notes and it'll turn your handwriting into notes that are searchable. Um, so I think I think absolutely, yes. I think the productivity tools are, are, are really there to make a big difference against the old analog ways. But it's all about people knowing how to use those tools effectively. And that's where I think there's a big opportunity. I was just going to say, with, with that, I know that you know, like our, one of the first questions we asked on this subject and that kind of kicked off a lot of these conversations was around whether Microsoft's biggest competitor might be the pen and paper. So we've got the whole you know, say you've got your kind of office setup or your desk, say your desk is the kind of real estate of your your personal uh, working environment. Um, you might have 50% of that will be kind of desktop and a screen and, you know, the kind of the digital side uh, that you use to manage your working day. But on the other side, you've got your pens and pads of paper. Um, like, I, I don't know about uh, everyone else here, but in preparation for this call, you know, I wrote down my notes on a pad just to kind of make sure that they were firm in my mind. And so, I wondered, being that you're you're both uh, kind of specialists with a lot of Microsoft technologies and you help a lot of other people to kind of get the most from it, if you feel like Microsoft might always be competing, you know, with that pen and pad of paper to get stuff done, if that's kind of a competition we think is going to be there, you know, for the, for the rest of working time, or if that's something we're going to see slowly kind of fade away and more people kind of rely on, on digital first. Yeah, I was just going to say, I'm not sure Microsoft see it as a, competition uh you know competitor i would say they definitely uh are doing more uh in the space to kind of bring users along uh teach them are they there yet no definitely not there's a lot that still needs to be done um i don't think the users are really aware of how the evolution of the products uh, how that goes about how that happens um you know new features are being added all the time this thing called evergreen as we we hear quite a lot so um <clears throat> with that you're getting all sorts of new features added every feature update to either word or or excel or all the other productivity tools that come within you know 365 in the workplace so 
all of these features are coming. I think there's a big uh, divide between what you know when you train um, uh, and what's actually in the feature set, you know, up to date now, you know, the modern feature set. So it is it's quite hard, you know, for, for users. Um, I, I would say Microsoft, and that leads to kind of that gap between, you know, there is people who just default to what they know, you know, whether that's the pen and paper, whether that's using Notepad to write notes down when there's one note, as, as Scott was saying. You know, there's definitely um, a huge training issue, really, and that that's the main main problem, I guess. Microsoft um, can help in that space, but that's where you definitely need uh, a company to adopt a really good adoption approach, you know, um, something that brings those users up to date with those features. And it needs to be regular as well. You know, if there's new features coming, users need to be trained. Otherwise, you just, we're old dogs. You just mm. use the, you know, the, uh, the old tricks that you know. So- when you say a lot of them needing training, is that is that something which is more because of the current workforce have kind of kind of gone through multiple different iterations of how to work, and it's it is is it more about retraining old dogs to have new tricks, or is it or is it like a training getting easier as new generations start coming into work? Well, that's that's really interesting because I, as as we were talking about this, I was just I was just picturing our our new digital marketing apprentice here, um, and yeah. everything she does when she's planning things out, it's on pen and paper. And mm. I was thinking, is this a generational thing? You know, is this mm. you know we've got five generations of people in the workforce at the moment. Is there a cutoff point where actually these you know these new joiners are digital natives, as we like to think of them? Everything's you know done in in text messaging on phones and, and on all this. Kind of stuff. Oh, I sounded really old when I said text messaging. Oh my goodness! <laughs> um, but you know, we 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 think of them as as coming out of school and college as being more tech savvy than we ever were when we when we joined the workforce. But even now, I think of our digital marketer, and you know, she she draws everything down, she plans everything out in her notebook, and and writes it all down. Um, and so I think you know, I think that there's a combination of things. I think that. There's working styles because, you know, we understand people are different learners as well. You know, you might be a kinesthetic learner. And so, you, you know, you might write down and reread things because that's how you absorb information and that's how you plan. Um, but then there are genuinely, to Matt's point, there are just there are just these training gulfs, you know, when, when people are brought into a role. Um, you know, you might be a specialist in finance and running SAID systems, but you don't get the opportunity to keep up to date with what's happening in OneNote and, you know, OneNote on mobile and how about using things in Excel that mm. are shortcuts. And you just, you don't get the time to go through those training cycles. And I think that's where there's a, there's a big opportunity here for us to really improve. You know, everybody, when they think about this analog to digital changeover in the workforce, we think about things like robotic process automation. How do we take things that are normally done on paper and turn it into an automated process? Cool, and, and, and that answers a huge amount of challenges. But there's such an amount of, of time and effort and, and brain space that we can get back if we can train our people to be really good at what they're doing with the tools that they've got and just sort of making the most, even just of Office 365, making the most of that suite and having everyone really know how to drive it well will give us just so much more time back, mm. you know, instead of, you know, just instead of just trying to fight to do something digitally that we can do much easier with a pen and paper <laughs> because mm. we feel like we should do it digitally. So now we're, we're really arguing and, and struggling with those systems. It all comes down to education, I think. And I'm not really sure if there's a competition. I, I, I like that idea that it's myself sort of competing with the pen and paper. Uh, I think they're trying to add. I think they're trying to, to push productivity forwards. Um, but yeah, it 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 needs it needs everyone to kind of grab onto that and have good solid you know sort of training plans and adoption yeah. plans. I, I think that you made a really good point there that I do want to circle back to. I mean, just before we we jumped on this call, you you talked about you know we were talking about working at home and kind of working in the office and what that looked like, um, and you mentioned uh, having having kids at home at the moment. And I know that because schools have been closed down so much you know, over the last year because of the pandemic. And a lot of uh, students have had to rely on kind of digital channels to, you know, for, for flexible learning and for teachers to be able to deliver lessons and as something to work work with. I wondered I whether you guys might think that we might be one of the last workforce generations that might still bother physically writing things down if we have this, 
you know, kind of whole generation of students, you know, all of a sudden have had to rely on laptops or tablets or whatever to to get their work and maybe submit it as well if they want their teacher to be able to read it. Um, unless unless kids are, are posting their homework, which which could be a thing, but. If, if we think that that might have like a knock-on impact so that when, you know, that generation gets into the workplace, all of a sudden they might not bother writing things down because they're like, you know what, I've been, you know, since I was in school, I've been used to writing things down in OneNote or making notes on a system. So, you know, I don't need to write it down with a pen and paper because it's just faster if I type it and then I can copy and paste it and that's just how I'm used to working. Yeah, no, absolutely. I I can see that. And I was, I was, again, I'm just thinking back. We have, uh, you know, my eldest is is seven years old. And as Mm -hmm. you were talking through that, I was thinking about what's the learning experience that we've had. Um, And ironically, everything has been written down with printed out sheets so that he can write down and do the working Mm -hmm. and practice his handwriting and spellings. Um, And then we take photographs of that and then we upload it. Um, Now, don't be wrong, this might just be you know, the, 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 they call them VLEs, don't they? These virtual learning experiences. It might just be the VLE that our school has um, where he can't sort of interact with that on screen. You know, if you have a Surface and a Surface Pen, you could write, you know, directly, you know, digitally into that experience. But we don't have that. So actually what we're doing is we're printing out, we're writing, and then we're, we're taking photographs. And I think, I still think, you know, when I look at him and, you know, I, this is just my personal experience, his he has a real creativity with his stories and his thinking. And that comes from the pen on paper experience um, mm. and his drawing, you know, all, all surfaces into that. And I think that's still going to be a huge part of our culture going forwards. I think, you know, for me, if we could find, and, and, and these tools do exist, we just don't use them as often as we could. If we could find this great experience to combine our pen and paper doodles and our handwriting and capture those digitally into OneNote, that would be a fantastic experience. But I tell you why I, I don't see that working right now is if you're if you have a, a Surface device, you know, like a Microsoft Surface device, so it's a nice touchscreen device with a keyboard and a pen. Mm. When you're writing, you're typically kind of doing it, you know, sort of up against the screen, which is an awkward experience. Yeah. Or you'll take the whole thing apart and you'll hold it and cradle it. Now, <laughs> for me, I, I have on my right hand side of my desk, just like you mentioned earlier, I have a, a doodle pad. Because I'll, mm. I'll just doodle. I'll, I'll be on a call. I'll just doodle. I'll make notes. I will then type those up separately. What I would love is if that doodle pad was just a digital you know, mm. capture device. So I'm just doodling away, and it's capturing it on screen in one note or something like that. And again, I'm sure all of those things are technically feasible, and I could, I could plumb that together. I'm, I'd like to think I'm a smart guy. But it's just not how I do that at the moment. And I think mm. I, I would... I would love to see that become embraced because that gives you the flexibility of both. The technology should be there to harness and accelerate how people want to work. It shouldn't force them down one particular route. And so if there's a really good way for you to work, I work best on a keyboard, or I work best you know, just scribbling notes and it's automatically brought in, the mm. technology should account for both. And I think that's where we get the real productivity from people giving them the tools to help them work in their fastest way possible, I think is, is, is definitely a better, better way forward. Yeah. No, I think that's a really interesting point. And, and you mentioned, yeah, like capturing the way that people work and taking that into account. I think I've seen, it might just be an advert for something uh, that kind of came up on a social media feed, but I think you can, you, you're starting to see people being able to like add an attachment to a pen so that you can write things down, but it can then translate the movements of the pen onto something like OneNote, so that you've you've got the the kind of feeling of physically writing, but you can you can take that over to your digital workspace and kind of build on that work in a way. Um, no, there absolutely are. Yeah, there there are definitely some things like that. Yeah, um, I must admit, I'm, I'm interested to ask Matt because when we spoke about this, I I I, I love my doodling like, like you do. Matt was staunchly against it, I feel. And, and he was like, no, I do everything in one note. I type my notes. I, you know, I put them all in there. Um, and I, I'd just like to ask him, you know, what would you think? Would you think if there was a, you know, a nice little, almost just like a mouse mat and you could, you could scribble your notes on there and it dropped into one note, would that be something that you'd use? Or is it, are you, are you just, you, you love the way that you do things in one note? Because I think this just talks to how we work. Yeah, digitally. no, I think, um, I mean, I do write the, notes and do designs but i do it on the surface with a surface pen like you say so yeah you know and it is frustrating you know (laughs) at times pulling that apart from the setup that you have to then 
scroll away or, or make that design drawing. Yeah, I would get definitely get benefit to something to the side that's plugged in that I can just pull across it's, and just doodle on, or it's already there in place. Yeah, definitely. I think um, you know I could definitely see uses for that. But yeah, for me, I'm I don't have a pen, don't have a pen and paper. You know, I, don't, I never use them. Um, it just the thought of notes and paper cluttering up uh, my environment. Just yeah, I don't like that idea. But but I know other people. It's very different. And to be fair. You know what you were saying around, um, you know, will, will we see a new generation that don't have pen and paper? Ah, I don't think so. I think we might see a reduction of those, but I think you're always going to get, it's the same with, um, you're, you're going to get a percentage of people who just are more tactile, you know, uh, need to, uh, I, you know, need to write something down, get get it right in the, you know, they're almost taking, what, taking what's in their head and putting it down on somewhere. And they kind of feel that when it transfers to the computer, it's becoming more of a a done, you know, that's more of the finished product, should I say. Um, it's certainly, you know, a way that people work. I mm. equate it to, you know, p- the music, you know, people always listening to stuff that's digital, but, you know, you do get a resurgence of vinyl where people want that tactile, you know, want to hold the record on it all and play it you know and so there's always going to be a need for that i think uh, it never will go away um but i think yeah i think we're seeing a generation who are using devices differently you know it's more around mobile it's raw about being connected all the time um you know and and especially with covid's changed learning quite a lot you know i, I see universities are also offering um you know courses that are cheaper that are online you know um, where perhaps they didn't uh, all the online courses whether it's college school universities are also being delivered over teams or um you know google hangout or uh, um zoom even so that they're being delivered over those ways people are getting more used to it i think uh, although there is a um you know it's up to the kind of workplace it's up to it uh, advocates and um evangelists to kind of help um, more people to understand the features that are there in 365 and Scott you, you you were saying there's an awful lot in those services but I don't think everyone needs to know all of them I think it's kind of almost you almost need to pitch it like Scott's touching on learning style what is your learning style what what is your preference talk to people about what because uh, there's there's a hundred ways to do well not maybe quite a hundred maybe there's ten ways to do the same thing in Word for instance you know, you can type, mm-hmm. for instance, you could also uh, dictate, um, you know, there's an awful lot of features within that. So you can transfer to OneNote, you know, th- there's all sorts of interoperability as well. You know, task management is, is one thing. There's uh, still lots of ways of doing task management. So there's different ways that are going to appeal to different people. So, um, yeah, finding that style, finding the, the features that apply to different people, Um you know, that's not going to be something that one person knows. It's almost going to be, let's make people aware of the features and they can pick and choose the ones that help their productivity. Excellent. That's a good final thought to end, end this conversation on. And uh, unless anyone has any other, any, any last thoughts they want to share for, for this episode. I think there was just there was just one that that Matt touched on there, which it, it just kind of light bulb to me as well, because that that is the use of voice um, and just naturally talking to the device you know it's, it's been a I, I don't know it almost seemed like it was a gimmick for a while and then it became like a real niche tool but we're so used to talking to that alexa and google and oh my goodness i shouldn't have said those names because you have to mute those out um but we're so used to talking to our home assistants um <laughs> and, and and it's becoming more natural to be able to you know they, they understand you more easily and actually just be able to take those notes quickly Again, it's faster to just be able to speak to your device and let it take those notes and write those things down for you than, than to you to write them again. And I think that's just another, you know, another way that we can interact with these things. And and, and part of this whole conversation just made me think around um, Microsoft's real focus for diversity and inclusion and, and accessibility when it comes to using their technologies. You know, we've seen them create uh, new ways, you know, with ink and voice to be able to, to get your, 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 your job done and, and get through your applications, but even right through into gaming where they're making the accessibility controller so that Xbox is mm. accessible to a whole new range of people. Um, 
So no, I think I, I, I love I love the premise of is is there some tension between pen and paper <laughs> and uh, and and being digital? But I think there's there's definitely you know a nice harmony there that we can find the right way that works for different people. Yeah, I think final thought for me is. Um, the reason Microsoft won't have the pen and paper as a competitor is because you generally need the pen and paper as well as you need Microsoft, uh, the 365 suite of products or, or another productivity um, service such as, you know, Google. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't really compete. It more, it's either you use pen and paper as well or you don't. You know, you just use the, the services that are there. So, yeah, I don't think it's ever going to be a competitor in the same sense. Yeah, to be fair, that is so true. I think if you kind of go back to the the real estate of your desk metaphor, I think if I lost the 50% that was the screen and desktop, I, find it, I think a lot more people at work would get frustrated by uh, <laughs> the pace I'd be able to get things done than um, and if I lost the pen and paper. That is, yeah, very true. Very good point. So... That's all for today. Thank you very much for listening. I really appreciate it. And also, thank you very much to Scott and Matt for having that really fantastic conversation. Next week, we'll be asking them back. We're going to be asking them what Microsoft features should the modern worker be using today. Very interesting conversation. And uh, if you want to learn more, also go to boxy.com slash insights and follow our blog and all the insights we've got. And don't forget to continue the conversation over on LinkedIn at Boxy's profile and the transformative showcase page. But that's all for now. See you again. Bye.